Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Mary Eleanor Power and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for Dalhousie University's Faculty of Open Learning and Career Development. And I'm here today, um, just myself, for those who have participated in webinars before, I often I have someone joining me, but I'll just be walking you through over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I'll leave some time for questions. Um, and uh, we'll just be chatting about how to fit university learning into your life, wherever you are in your lifelong learning journey. Um, uh, we hope that perhaps a Dalhousie can fit into those, uh, those learning plans, those learning goals. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge that Dalhousie University is located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. We are all treaty people. And I also want to recognize that African Nova Scotians are a distinct people whose histories, legacies, and contributions have enriched that part of Mi'kma'ki, known as Nova Scotia, for over 400 years. So wherever you're joining us from, welcome. So I'm going to get us started. Um, before I do that, just one housekeeping, a few housekeeping notes, actually. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the chat um, as we go along. And, uh, and then also just want to let everyone know that if there are things that I cover too quickly, um, that uh, rest assured that later today, you'll receive an email in your inboxes, check your junk folders um, uh, with a recording of today's webinar, along with uh, some helpful links um, for you to find out more information. Okay. So Really the goal of today's, of, of my chat to share with, um, with all of you is just how you can jump back into learning with ease. Um, so I am going on a, a bit of an assumption that perhaps some of you are already working or currently um, have full-time careers or perhaps are in between uh, jobs, but that um, perhaps you are um, early, mid or late in your career. And so how can Dalhousie University support you um, in uh, fitting in lifelong learning? And sometimes it feels like we have to fit it in, we have to squish it in, but how can we easily help you jump back into learning with uh, some ease? So where I thought I would start, there are many different ways that I could, um, where I could start this, uh, this webinar with all of you today. Um, but I thought that I would share just kind of a little bit about where we fit and where our faculty fits in offering learning opportunities um, at Dalhousie. So we, um, we kind of talk about the courses that we offer as non-credit learning. And so what this refers to is um, the fact that when you complete courses or certificates with us, it will earn you a CEU. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but um, we kind of, we um, operate in this space where um, if you're looking for additional professional development, um, that uh, you, would, you would look to our faculty to pursue some non-credit learning. Credit learning refers to um, any academic courses that you would um, look to take to then transfer into, into a degree program, whether that be undergraduate or graduate or, or other. Um, so we, I, I always like to make that distinction up front. It's very much an academic term, but it's important um, just to understand, give a, a, an understanding of where we, the majority of our courses, um, where we kind of fit, and it's in that non-credit uh, learning space. And so what is a CEU? So I said that I would kind of share that um, a little bit and uh, would give clarity to this. So um, if you have visited our website before, our faculty website, and I'll give the link um, at the end of the webinar, um, but uh, if you visited any of our courses or have thought of registering for any of our courses, you might see this term used, and it refers to a continuing education unit. So um, if you're taking a credit course, um, you would earn an AU or an academic unit. Um, so our CEUs, uh, this is a, a nationally recognized term. And it's to document your participation in organized non-credit continuing education. So what that means is um, uh, in some cases, depending on the length of a course, you can earn uh, one CEU, which is defined as 10 contact hours of participation in organized continuing education. So um, depending on the length of the course, you may be able to earn three, four, five CEUs. Um, and those are, 
Um, those are things that you can use depending on what industry you work in. You can use them to help uh, qualify you um, for an assessment. Um, there are different things that you can use CEUs for, um, but thought that I would, would also clarify what you earn in addition to um, a course completion certificate or that full, if you complete a full certificate at Dalhousie, it will earn you um, that uh, full parchment uh, certificate from, from our faculty. Let's move along here. So I thought that I would spend most of our time kind of walking you through the different ways that you can learn at our faculty. So um, at Dalhousie, um, the majority of our academic courses uh, are taught face-to-face. -face. We recognize that at our faculty, a lot of our learners are working, have family commitments, um, and just have a whole range of commitments that might prevent them from uh, from being able to take a course face-to-face. -face. So we offer all of these different ways of learning. And uh, I thought that I would walk you through how we define each one so that if you are visiting our website in the future, you understand um, what could best fit your learning needs. So just kind of walking us down the line. So we have our first online self-paced, um, and you might look at online self-paced and online blended and think, oh gosh, those are probably quite similar. So I wanted to provide some distinction. So online self-paced, there are no pre-scheduled live sessions, but our instructors can be available to assist. And that's really important. We don't want you to think that because it's a self-paced course that you don't have access to the instructors to ask questions. Um, you certainly do, and you can also reach out to our student services team um, at openlearning.dell.ca who can point you in the right direction if you have troubles or questions. Um, and uh, you can start the course whenever you're ready. So the, these online self-paced courses are, are really um, ones that you can, can uh, start and finish at your own pace, but um, you do have a predetermined amount of time to complete the course. Um, and depending on the course, um, that will be kind of clarified before you register um, how long you have to complete it. Our online blended courses, um, they do combine kind of scheduled and self-paced learning. So here, um, you would have scheduled live sessions um, with instructors, some, um, but then there are also those self-paced learning components. So you could expect that assessments would have deadlines. Um, you can choose when to work on them, but there would be specific deadlines that you would have to meet in order to um, complete those assessments. Our online scheduled courses, um, so these classes are held in real time at specified dates and times. And before you register, um, those times are listed on the courses. So you know what you're, what you're committing to. Um, and here you have the benefit of interacting with your instructor and peers through live conversation. Um, I, on a personal note, took an online scheduled course through our faculty in change management. And it was really beneficial, depending on the topic, it can be really beneficial to have that live interaction. Some courses are, are really um, designed to be taken at your own pace, but if you're the kind of person who learns um, through discussion, um, I, I would encourage you to explore some of our online scheduled courses. And I should mention that some, um, some courses are offered in a few different um, modalities. So some you can take self-paced, but then you could also take the same course in kind of an online blended format. So um, in some cases, the choice is yours. Um, and then we do offer uh, courses in face-to-face -face format. Um, masks are currently required in, um, in uh, instruction, instruction spaces. Um, and generally our face-to-face -face courses are offered on campus um, in Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia, or at a designated off-campus location. And then we also run hybrid courses that are courses that run face-to-face, -face, but have some online learning components through readings or videos. Um, and then we also have one, just to confuse you a little bit more, um, we also have high flex version, um, which is uh, the option to choose between participating in live classes or remotely um, through online video conferencing. So that means that um, you'll be kind of tuning in online to a live uh, classroom setting. You'll have your peers, um, who, those who choose to participate in the, in the class face-to-face, um, there and then the instructor will also 
um, instruct those that are, are tuning in online at the same time. Are there any questions? I just want to pause here for a minute and, uh, and see if there are any questions on the different ways that you can learn at our faculty. And I do have a poll as well that I want to bring up here. So I do want to um, launch this poll just to kind of get a sense now that I've kind of walked, walked you through some of the options. Um, I have a list here of your preferred. I'd love to know what your preferred style of learning is. And I've offered just some options here uh, and, uh, and hoping that you can let me know what your preference is. So we have 100% online and 100% of my own pace. So no instructor involvement, 100% um, online with um, some scheduled live sessions hosted by the instructor, the face-to-face or um, some face-to-face -face and some online. Okay, interesting. Just wait. Just another minute here. Okay, fantastic. All right, thanks everyone for participating. It's interesting to see that there's um, are some some face to face and some online. I, I'm taking that to mean that um, perhaps there's uh, you prefer kind of that combination, um, or that maybe this this refers to. Um, the fact that maybe some courses you would prefer to take face-to-face -face and maybe some that you would prefer to take online. But it's interesting to see that face-to-face, -face, perhaps we wouldn't have chosen this option um, when the pandemic was at its, at its height, at its peak. Um, but uh, certainly um, there's a lot that you can gain from face-to-face -face learning. And, uh, and then I also see there are some people who prefer the 100% online, 100% at your own pace. And there's a lot of ease, um, especially if you are um, kind of wanting to introduce university learning back into your life. Um, doing it 100% online and at your own pace um, does create some additional flexibility. So I can appreciate um, that that would be appealing as well. Okay, wonderful. I will stop sharing. Okay, thanks everyone. I noticed some. Um, Notice some questions in here in the chat. Okay, so I, I, Gina, just a question from you here. Do we face online courses for January, 2023? So um, I, I, think, I think I understand uh, your question and, and it, it sounds to me that it, it pertains to uh, just are, are we offering online courses for January 2023? And we, we are, oh, because of weather conditions. Um, yes, yeah, so we do, we do have a number of courses. The majority of our courses are offered online. Um, certainly there are um, weather conditions that we need to be mindful of, um, especially if anyone's traveling from outside of the country for, um, learning at our faculty, um, but certainly, you know, we, we do take into consideration the fact that winter is, especially in Canada, is, is, can, be, can be really hard to navigate. So, um, you know, we will continue to offer the majority of our courses online so that weather doesn't have to be a factor. Okay, so Alicia has a question specifically for the leadership professional study course. Are the different sections offered in order one at a time. Um, <clears throat> so um, Alicia, thanks for your question. The, um, perhaps it would be helpful, um, just if you could maybe clarify if there are specific ones that you are thinking of. Um, and uh, and I, I'm, I'm just understanding your question to mean that do you need to take the courses in sequence. Um, and maybe if you can clarify just if I have that right, um, if you need to take the, the um, courses in sequence, then, then maybe I can kind of better answer your, your question. 
Um, and uh, Catherine, uh, do you also have classes? You mentioned classes in Halifax. Do you also have classes at the agricultural campus in Truro? Or is that not part of your domain? So yes, we do. Um, so we work with um, a, the continuing education unit in Truro. Um, it's called Extended Learning. And um, our Faculty of Open Learning and Career Development generally host our face-to-face -face courses um, online on the, or sorry, at the Halifax campus, but the agricultural campus, they do have their own set of professional development courses um, that they offer. Um, and those would be on um, the Truro campus. And I can um, certainly provide you with um, uh, a link to all of the courses that are offered um, in Truro. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Catherine. Um, I'll, um, I'll send the link to those, um, those courses in a minute of um, those that are offered at the Faculty of Agriculture. Um, okay, and uh, Gina, I hope I've answered your question there because of weather conditions. I think, I, think, I hope I did, um, just that everything will be offered online. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay. And another question, can you share a few tips for balancing work life and studies where work is very demanding? Absolutely. Um, and I would welcome those in the chat to, um, to offer their suggestions as well. I can certainly speak from my experience. Um, I have a five-year-old uh, son, work full-time, very um, demanding, fun job um, that I have here at the faculty. Um, and when I was taking the change management course, um, one of the tips that I can offer um, at the faculty, so that had um, online, it was an online scheduled uh, course. So one tip um, I, I would suggest was being, um, is being really upfront with your supervisor about um, if there are any scheduled sessions before you register for the course that you make that clear. Um, and perhaps just have a conversation with them about the fact that you are taking some additional professional development. Um, they may be willing or, or um, would certainly, I think, at, at the very least, be interested in the fact that you are um, kind of pursuing learning outside of your work um, and just be upfront with them about, about, um, about what you're doing, um, if that's the kind of relationship that you have with your, with your supervisor. So that's probably, um, I would say, tip number one. Um, number two, for, for me, that worked really well. Um, uh, I would suggest um, just being realistic about your time. Um, and so for me, um, I kind of carved out smaller chunks of time after my son went to bed, rather than kind of sitting myself down at my computer and working four hours on a course after I've just worked a full, a full work day, I would set perhaps an hour um, for myself a few times a week, um, a few nights a week, just so that I could have smaller bite size, um, you know, uh, chunks of learning rather than uh, kind of tiring myself um, and setting out kind of a four hour evening versus kind of four nights of, of one hour pieces of learning. Um, that, was, that was really helpful for me. Um, and uh, I would say, um, another, another tip um, that was really helpful was just being um, really, uh, I guess, uh, structured with my time, um, recognizing that my learning had a beginning and an end, and perhaps being a little bit more regimented in terms of, um, you know, when I would finish my work day, when I would put my son down to bed, and when I would um, study. So I really had to be quite structured just for that period of time, um, knowing that, you know, it has a finite beginning and an end. Um, those are some of my kind of uh, tips that I would share. Um, that's, uh, again, kind of balancing work and life and also being realistic about, um, you know, how much you can take on um, per evening or per early morning. Um, and uh, I welcome anyone else in the chat who's done some professional development um, while working full time to kind of offer their thoughts as well. Okay, 
Um, and so I, I hope that was helpful a few, sharing a few tips, balancing work life and studies where work is very demanding. Um, Alicia, I'm currently taking the DEI course. So that's the diversity inclusion equity, um, equity and inclusion course in that program. And was wondering if the next section will be offered um, next semester. Um, so uh, let me just see if the next section, um, maybe Alicia, if you don't mind, you can send me kind of a private note um, with your email and I can follow up with you directly. I think that would probably be uh, a good option just to make sure that I get you the right information. And uh, okay, what can we expect for, so Gina is asking, what can we expect for future students at Dal in January, 2023? Um, so, uh, so my understanding is that it, um, I mean, we certainly get this directive from the university, but right now um, all courses would continue to be offered face-to-face. -face. This is for credit courses. So those in undergraduate or graduate degree programs, when it comes to, um, future students at Dal specific to our faculty, um, we would continue to offer courses online. So um, if it's kind of credit academic courses um, that you're looking to take in January, 2023, um, those would be uh, offered face-to-face. -face. For our faculty in the non-credit professional development space, it would be on online. Thanks, Alicia. I'll make sure to follow up with you directly. Um, no problem, Gina. That's great. I'll, uh, oopsie daisy, I'm lost. There we go. Yeah, I'll make sure to follow up with you, Alicia, on that. Thanks everyone for your questions. I'm glad to just pause there and, and answer them as we go along. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to add them in as we go. So I thought that I would also um, give you a little bit of insight on the learning, um, the learning system that we use. Um, so the learning management system that we use for all of our online course, or the majority of our online courses is Brightspace. So if you have um, taken part in courses offered by our faculty in the past, um, or you're wondering what is, is this, just thought that I would give a brief introduction um, and kind of share uh, a little bit about Brightspace. So um, for all of our courses, uh, for sorry, I should say for the majority of our courses, some we have sessions hosted in Zoom and other platforms, but for the most part, you'll find all of your um, course materials, videos, podcasts, anything that the instructor has posted online to enhance your learning can be found on Brightspace. Um, and so that's uh, the system that we use to kind of that offer that kind of ease of learning online. Um, and there are lots of um, interesting things that you can do in Brightspace that our instructors are, are leveraging to make the most of that online learning experience. Okay, wonderful. Thanks. Looking forward to receiving the recording. Yes, we'll send around the recording uh, later today. That's great. Thank you. So who teaches our courses? I thought that I would just um, share a little bit kind of a broad background on, um, on who you might expect um, to teach our courses. So um, we have the majority of our instructors are working professionals. So they're either uh, currently in uh, working in their industry, and then we work with them to make sure that um, the courses and they're, they're very skilled at kind of putting together course material that is particularly relevant and timely based on what's going on in the industry because they're working in the industry. Um, and so uh, what that means for you, the learner, is that you're not only just receiving kind of foundational knowledge on the particular subject that you're learning, but you're also seeing that in uh, kind of real, real life scenarios. Um, you're talking through um, things that are happening in the news related to the subject. Um, and you're getting the most recent um, research um, around that topic as well. So um, we really um, kind of pride ourselves on, uh, on kind of attracting subject matter experts who can give you the most meaningful uh, learning experiences so that you can take that and apply it to your current job or if you're looking at shifting careers 
um, you feel confident that you're receiving the most um, up-to-date and relevant knowledge in that area. So um, we've almost reached the end of our time. There were some great questions throughout. And so I just wanted to um, kind of show you, uh, this is a, a screenshot of our website and, and show you where you can go um, to find more information about the courses that we have upcoming. Um, so we have our self-paced courses. Um, if you click on this link from our website, which is dal.ca slash open learning, um, then you'll see those self-paced courses listed that you can start any time that I mentioned. Um, but then also you'll notice that we have um, courses broken out by the different terms. So we still have some courses that are starting this fall that have yet to start. So if you're looking to add some university learning into your life, um, there are still some courses available um, that are starting soon. And then also um, we have uh, certainly a full suite of courses starting in winter. And then um, if you're planning out um, further in the future, um, then we do have lots of courses um, in the spring, summer of 2023. So, um, and I've just included here um, the email address for our student services team. So um, Gina, Kim, um, Robbie, they are all part of our um, open learning uh, student services team. And by reaching out to openlearning at dal.ca, um, you'll hear from them and they would be happy to answer your questions. And speaking of which, now is the time for any questions. We have two minutes left. And so um, I welcome anything that I haven't shared already. Um, welcome questions for things I haven't shared already. Um, and uh, I'll just pause here for a moment. Okay. I don't see any other questions coming through in the chat. Um, so thank you everyone so much for giving me the opportunity to walk you through how you can learn at uh, Dalhousie through our faculty. Um, and as I, as I mentioned, there are lots of different ways that you can engage in courses with us that can fit, fit what you need for your learning right now. Um, and we really try at the faculty to make sure that we're offering courses in a number of different modalities so that um, you don't feel like there are barriers to pursuing university learning wherever you are in your, in your life and in your career. So um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks so much again for joining. Um, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to openlearning at dal.ca. And I hope to see you in a future course. Take care, everyone.